welcome back to another episode of Search It Up with Sienna, the web series where I use IMDb to discover and talk about all different types of movies and TV shows and how the people in front of and behind the camera not only make it all possible, but are somehow all interconnected. I talk directly with the talent about their backstories and experiences on and off set and what they're up to today. On my last episode, I talked about Schmigadoon with creator and writer Cinco Paul. Martin Short played the leprechaun in Schmigadoon, and he played the unforgettable Frank in Father of the Bride. So today, I'm going to be talking about Father of the Bride, and I have the honor to speak with the incredible director and writer on the movie, Charles Shire. Father of the Bride is a classic comedy movie starring Steve Martin and Diane Keaton, who play the parents of Annie, played by Kimberly Williams Paisley. Basically what happens is Annie goes off to college and she was in Europe and finds her true love and when she comes back from college she tells her parents about how she wants to get married to this guy and they kind of freak out, especially Steve Martin who plays the dad. But then what happens is I guess they go through with the wedding, so they go and they go to a Martin Short who plays Frank and he's the crazy funny wedding planner and the whole movie is just about everything crazy happening during this wedding, trying to prepare it so quickly and on such short notice. But it turns out to be this great and hilarious movie, and the cast just works so well together. In addition to his work on Father of the Bride, Charles Shire's other classic movies include Private Benjamin, The Parent Trap, Irreconcilable Differences, Alfie, The Noel Diaries, and more. And now, without further ado, here's my interview with Charles Shire. Do you remember your first job in the film and TV business? Yeah, yeah I see. I, I, the thing is, I grew up on movie sets because my dad was in the movie business. So every weekend, when I, from the time I was probably seven or eight, I would go to movie sets. Um, so it was something that I was very used to. My first actual job was, um, golly, I guess it was... Um, I was a trainee in the Directors Guild. I, w I was in the first class of trainees at the Directors Guild. And that was probably my first job. And I, I worked uh, as an assistant cost coordinator or something at the Mirish Company. And it was a job I was not well suited for because I was somebody who failed mathematics you know, in school and stuff. I, never, I failed Algebra 1. I was horrible at the job. And um, it, was, it was difficult for them because my dad was was kind of one of the founders of the Directors Guild for so for that for for the Mirish Company to say this kid has no talent was I think a hard thing to do, but uh, so eventually I left there and I went to work on a, on a movie called The Russians Are Coming, uh, what Norman Jewison was directing, and I was like the third assistant director. Uh, I was like twenty one years old or something. Like you mentioned, your parents are were both in the industry. Did you always know you would like go into the industry or was there something else you wanted to do before you became? No, there was nothing I, I wanted to do before. I mean, look, truthfully, I was a horrible student in school. Uh, I was pretty good at writing. So I, I won some essay contests and stuff like that. And I knew um, basically if I don't, if I don't get into like movies, um, I could maybe be in advertising or I could maybe write speeches for politicians and stuff like that. But I, I, you know, I wasn't going to be a doctor or a lawyer. I wasn't going to work at a bank. I knew my options were pretty limited, yeah. which, you know, um, and thankfully back when I was starting out, it was easier to break in than it is now, you know, yeah. but it was still hard, you know. And I read that you love writing and um, it's something that I also love to do now. Um, what is it that you just, that you love about writing? I don't love writing that much. Um, I, I like, I like when I'm finished and it's uh, like Dorothy Parker said, the great writer, I like, I hate writing. I love having written because, you know, when you look at it, I, I, I like it. There's a certain, there's a certain feeling I think when you're writing when you get on a roll, it's probably not unlike being a musician. You know, I mean, I, I can play a, 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 a minuscule guitar, but just if I've ever done that with somebody else and you get in a groove, it's just a great feeling. And it's, it's that way when, you know, when I wrote with Nancy and uh, you know, if we, if we got into a role, 
and, and we were feeling good about what we were doing, that was great. It was a real high. Yeah, writing's hard, man. Mm-hmm. It's really hard. It's really yeah. hard. It's, it's just, you know, directing is a lot easier. Yeah, and on to my next question, it just had to do with directing. What got you interested in directing and what was your first directing project? My first directing thing was uh, the I did an odd couple because I was working for Gary Marshall and Jerry Belson. Uh, the reason I became a director is because I uh, I didn't want somebody else to screw up the movie, you know, <laughs> and that's kind of, you know, and with Private Benjamin, which was our first big movie uh, that we wrote, you know, I, mean, I I rewrote other movies like Smoking the Bandit and House Calls and Going South and stuff like that. But I was just a writer. I was just a hired hand, which was OK. But Private Benjamin was a work of of. You know, we really loved that movie. And then the director, we didn't see eye to eye with the director so much at the time. And I just said, I can't, we were the producers, but I, you know, I, I just felt I can't do this anymore. I have to control, I have to not control so much. I have to, I can't turn it over to somebody who doesn't see the movie that we see. Yeah. You know, and he did. And that was a real, it was a war zone, that movie. It turned out to be a big hit, but. It was it was not easy getting there. And now let's talk about Father of the Bride. Um, it was based on an older movie with Elizabeth Taylor and Spencer Tracy. What gave you the idea to remake that movie? It wasn't our idea. Steve Martin came to us with it. Oh, um, really? Yeah, I I had never seen the movie. I never even I don't know if I'd even heard of it. You know, <laughs> now I knew of Vincent Minnelli as the director was a really good director. You know, I love Spencer Tracy, of course, Elizabeth Taylor. Um, but, um, you know, we watched, we watched the movie, me and Nance, and then, um, we, you know, we love Steve Martin. He was in New York at the time and, um, he was interviewing three different writers for the, for the, for the movie. And, uh, so we got on a plane to New York and I hadn't read the script that he wanted to have us rewrite yet. And I read it on the plane. For the first time which was pretty irresponsible actually i'm going to new york i haven't read this. And i read the script and i thought i need a parachute man i gotta jump out of this plane this is like i i really didn't like the script at all and um but nance and i had ideas and stuff and we met with steve and he liked baby boom this movie we did and uh and we met to, with him in his apartment and in new york and he chose us to to do it so um and that's how it happened it, it was the genesis was was all steve did you have specific cast members in mind like you said um you and nancy had kind of like an idea of what you were gonna write about but did you have certain cast members in mind no like- i mean we wrote it for steve um uh, you know we loved diane from baby boom but we didn't really think of her when we were writing i didn't know marty short at all so marty, marty short was steve's idea so no, other than Steve, and then when we got down to casting, you know, the studio didn't want Diane Keaton. You know, they fought us on it. Yeah, uh, yeah, please. But we finally prevailed and got her in the movie, and she was good. But um, and then Marty was great in the movie, and uh, and Kimberly Williams was somebody that we that we found um, just by auditioning. She was going to Northwestern University. She was a student, and. Um, and we, we we actually met with and read a lot of women who became big movie stars like Scarlett Johansson, Gwyneth Paltrow, people like that. But she, they they didn't they were all great. They just didn't ring the bell for us the way Kim did, mm-hmm. and uh, so we went with Kim. You know, I heard that Steve Martin was like on board for it even before you started writing it. Um, but how did did he like how did he like choose you? How did that come about? Um, to you guys. Well, he he had he had um, he had two other people he really liked. I don't know. I guess we had a good meeting with him, and and that's why and that's what he responded to. And he was um, really a great collaborator. You know, he would. I, I remember whenever we were doing the movie, he would say to me, "When you have, when you have the scene the way you like it, tell me," and. Because I have an idea, but uh, you get it the way you like it first, and let me try my idea. And if you like it, you like it. Every time, every time we tried his idea, it's in the movie. 
<laughs> it, was, it was always better than ours, you know, because he's so brilliant. So that was great. That was really yeah. true. That was great. And Marty too. Marty would improvise stuff that would just crack me and Nancy up. I mean, he's he's just he was in the zone on this movie, on Father of the Bride, with that character, like unlike any time I've ever seen him. On that note, I think Father of the Bride and Father of the Bride too, um, like I think that both like Steve Martin and Martin Shore are just like so funny in it. Like, were there any times where the cast and crew like just couldn't hold in laughter? Well, well, the, N Nancy and I had a couple times. Like when he what, the first time uh, that they come to 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 his uh, to his whatever wherever Marty worked, whatever you call that, and 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 uh, B D Wong was there that day. The when when Marty came came in. And and did that introduction. Nancy and I were crying with laughter. <laughs> I mean, it, it, I, I think we kind of almost blew the takes because it was just so fun. Marty was so funny. And then he would, he's brilliant. I mean, you know, there's no way. And he's just like, and, and also he, he, um, he creates an atmosphere when he's on the set that is so light, light and fun and, and, it, and kind of exciting. So, yeah. you know, um, it was a great vibe that shoot. Mm -hmm. it, was, it really was. Yeah, and I I love the character of um, Frank, and he, I remember he said in an interview that there's always like the question of can you put something over the top and something um, like so sincere, um, but that that was that you went with your gut and it worked. And yeah. did you really think his character would be so over the top and funny when you were writing the script? No, but what we did, we had this, Nance and I had this thing where the first time the studio saw dailies with him, they freaked out because they said, you can't understand one word he's saying. This is a, they thought it was a disaster. So Nancy and I said, okay, well, we'll, here's what we'll do. We'll do three different versions of every, of that accent, you know, and, um, and we can choose later what we'll, we'll be able to. And then what we stopped doing that after a week or so because we knew the most extreme version of that accent was the best. And we just stopped and the studio started to get behind it. And that yeah. was kind of it the rest of the way. And I heard that in one scene, Kimberly Williams was supposed to get emotional, but she really had like a hard time crying on cue. And as a director, how do you support an actor in a situation like that? I, I, it was the scene where she got the where where, where she got the uh, blender, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, we wanted her to cry, um, be emotional, like kind of like Lucy w was. You know, I mean, we wanted it to be funny but emotional. And um, you know what it is? I think it's um, you just have to be patient, and you have to wear. And in a weird way, you have to wear the actors down. So their defenses are down and they're frustrated and upset. And uh, we just keep going until you get it. You know, I mean, I, I she knew I would do 100 takes yeah. to get that, you know. So I think, um, you know, I just say you got to be more. You know, I don't know what I said, you know, walking up to her, but I just kept most persistent. I know that, mm -hmm. you know. And what was the most challenging part of making this movie? I think I think uh, a couple things. I mean, the schedule was was a little bit tough. Um, I, I guess the challenging part was to make it emotional, you know, because it the, it was it was comedic from the start, and it, it was really a, it was a funny script. They're all funny, but uh, you know, uh, are you gonna? Let's like Billy Wilder, the great director, said, "You we want." one thing all of us we want to make them laugh and make them cry and i think the uh the 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 story of the father daughter was kind of the glue for that movie yeah. and and um i think that that um yeah i, I it, that to me the to find that emotional thread and to carry it through the movie and to 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 i guess have the audience really uh well, especially women, I went kind of kind of crazy for that movie because it's it's kind of a tearjerker, which is not what you expect, but it, yeah. it turned out it turned out to be that, and that 
that was a mitzvah for us. Yeah, that was really good. So we, I, I, I guess that would answer your question to to bring the emotion uh, to the to the forefront of that movie, to make it yeah. be the balance between the emotion and uh, and the comedy. And did you know during the filming of the first Father of the Bride, you would make a sequel? No, no, we didn't. No, I, 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 I no. <laughs> No, we didn't think that way. No, we just thought let's get through this. You know, we, we weren't thinking of a sequel. Yeah, I think Father of the Bride and Father of the Bride Two really hold up today. Both the roles and the situations are still kind of relevant today. Um, and did you expect that when you first made it, or like when you first made it, it would be to the success it would be at the moment? Well, you know, it, it's it's a good question because Nancy and I always. Uh, when we we didn't ever want to make movies that would not age well, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so we we were very very um, aware of the fact that we wanted it to be a movie that would last with. So we don't have reference jokes and stuff like that. We try to make it a movie that um, that lasts through the ages. We always were aware of that. We didn't want to make a movie of the moment ever. Yeah. You know, and that was a big, that's all our movies. We always felt that. That's Baby Boom, Private Benjamin, all of Irreconcilable Differences, all of our movie, Parent Trap. We tried to, you know, we tried to always be, you know, a, a movie that would last through yeah. the ages. Yeah. And like you mentioned, actually, for my ex, like Max question, I was going to ask Parent Trap. I recently just watched it for the first time. I've heard so many good things about it from all my friends um, and everything. It's such a good movie. And I watched it. It was amazing. I loved it so much. Um, and I think it also really like on that line too, still holds up today. Um, but what was your favorite memory about writing that movie? Well, it, it, that was a movie that, you know, the, the Haley Mills version. I don't know if you've ever seen that. Nancy loved that movie. So it, it was much, it, very much her passion to do this. So I, I, I would say the, oh, just, it was the kind of movie where we were very loose writing it. So it, it, it kind of flowed that movie. Um, and I remember uh, when we were doing screen tests, I, I think we we're testing five girls, maybe six or seven, I'm not sure. But I, I know the minute that Lindsay, Lindsay was second or third up. And the minute she tested, I said to Nancy, we'll never beat this girl. <laughs> she was just uh, she's really brilliant in that movie it's you know she became those two girls and yeah. it's it's kind of amazing you know uh, it de yeah definitely is and it's really it's definitely really hard to do to be two different yeah versions. well Haley Mills did it but ha and Haley Mills was a great actress so I mean she's up there you know Lindsay's yeah. up there yeah and I also recently saw Noel Diary, and I also love that one. Um, what are the big differences to filmmaking now versus when you first started? And what do you they don't miss? Pay, they don't. I miss they don't pay you as much. That's <laughs> what. I, that's what I miss the most. Uh, the, uh, Noel Diary, I have to say, was a joy to make because uh, the cast was great. Netflix was great to me. I mean, they didn't pay me that well, but they treated me royally you know i i never had an argument they were just so supportive and great and the movie turned out really well i mean it's a it was a big hit for them uh and i love justin hartland i love barrett doss and i i loved everybody in the cast bonnie bedelia james remar uh yeah. essence Hawkins. Uh, they were all they just all were great it was just a really and it was a it was a movie that was shot in 26 days and but it worked man it was just because we were all on the same page so yeah. it, was really, it was really cool. I yeah, love that. It was, it was yeah. really cool to watch. Um, yeah. And are you working on anything at the moment now? Well, I am, but we're on strike, uh, as you know. And yeah. um, I, I have two movies that I'm putting together right now. Uh, but I can't do much with them because of the strike. So, um, but yes, I do. I have stuff. And, I, I, and, I'm, uh, and I'm working on a third script that I'm writing with my friend Mark Klein. So yeah, we're, I'm busy. And my one last question before I have like a final little like game almost, um, what advice would you give to the next generation of filmmakers? I think you got to, um, you got to, um, I guess you have to make movies. You have to keep writing. You, you can't give up. 
but it's it's brutal you know and it's um you have to be true to yourself and 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 you know i mean like i think nance and me and i think we maybe wrote at least 30 drafts of private benjamin oh, we wow. never stopped you know i mean we don't you know i, I Every movie I've made, I've written just endless drafts because I never think it's good enough. And I think that's how you have to be. You have to try to make it as absolutely good, as good as you can. And that goes for writing the script or or, 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 or making the movie. I, and, you know, my, my son, one of my, I have four kids. One of my kids wants to be a movie maker and he's making movies now. And it's, I see it's hard, man. It's really yeah. hard. Yeah. Get yeah. good actors. I guess that's the other thing. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's really important. Bad actors yeah. will thank you. Yeah, definitely. So finally, I just started doing like an experiment with my guests almost. Um, and I'm yeah. building a story with them. So you're the third guest I'm asking for the input from. My previous guests were Kara San, who was the cap costume designer, the Descendants movies, and Cinco Paul, who wrote Despicable Me movies. Um, but this is the story so far. And then you just add like a line or two to the story and then it'll keep adding on. Okay. So once upon a time, there was a young girl who was very quiet in her own way. She had dreams of becoming a creator and a talent. And that little girl had a mother who poured everything into her and who was her biggest support and her biggest cheerleader. And she encouraged her to do, go into the world and do amazing things. But then one day the girl returned home to find that her mother had disappeared and she was so dependent on her mother, but now she was alone in the world and she felt like she couldn't possibly pursue her dreams without her mother. Then she finds a clue about where her mother might be and she goes on a journey to see if she can find her mother. So now you can add on a couple of lines um, to the story. She gets a phone call in the middle of the night and it's her mother saying, please don't try to find me. I left because I had to leave. I'm sorry and I'm sorry. Those are good. Those are good. It's definitely going to keep the story going. Thank okay. you. Sir. Yeah. Oh, you're I great. Was... God bless you, man, that you're doing this. Thank you. At 13, it's amazing. It's great. <laughs> it's just great. Thank so you. Your, your parents should be really proud of you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you so much for talking to me today. And I love all your movies so much. And Well, thank you. Thank you're you so great. much. Thank you for talking to me. No worries. Have okay. Bye-bye. Have a great day. Bye. Yeah. Bye-bye, you too. Thank you so much, Mr. Shire. I loved hearing about all your behind the scenes stories and experiences on all these great films. You're such an inspiration. And now, before we search it up, here's a quick fun fact. Did you know that Martin Short invented his own accent for Father of the Bride? And now it's time to search it up. Let's see. Oh, Diane Keaton plays the mom, Nita Banks, in Father of the Bride, and she also plays Jenny, Dory's mom, on Finding Dory. So next time, we're going to be talking about Finding Dory. See you then!